Hey guys, Grady here. So, um, it's November 5th already. Wow. It's so late in the year 2018 already. I can't believe it. Um, you know, everything's going well. Ignoring the political scheme of things, of course. Um, in terms of political things, things aren't going so great. Not just here, but in, you know, in other parts of the world as well. Um, but it's been getting a lot colder, which is nice, especially for me, because I, I love the cold weather. I'm a cold weather freak. Total cold weather freak. Um, I've got, um, Robert here with me. I've got Julie as well. She's off to the side over there. There she is. Um, Uh, it's a fairly bright day, but the clouds are still rolling in in some parts. As you can see behind me, there are no clouds, but up ahead there, there are some clouds. You might not be able to see them so well because of the sunlight, but there's the sun. There she is in all her spectacular, stunning beauty. You know, I don't, I don't like it when it's too bright out like this. But I mean, I don't hate the sun. I don't, we need the sun to live, obviously, but um, you know, I'm just more of a cold weather person, but hey, I understand, you know, that there are people out there who are like, oh yeah, I love the heat and all that, you know? I mean, personally me, I would love to, there are some warm places I'd love to go. I'd love to go to the Republic of Cuba and um, Brazil, as I've already mentioned in a previous video. But, um, yeah, it's been a good day overall. I finally went to the um, animal shelter in the next county over. One of the animal shelters in the next county over. The closest one to my house that's in the next county over. Um, and I signed up for the volunteer posi for a volunteer position there. So I'm really hoping that they accept me. I've become great friends with the people who are working there. Not all of them. I don't know all of them who work there, but I know quite a few of them. And, you know, they can, they can vouch for me. Uh, you know, and just yesterday, I mean, they were at my store because it's Monday today. Yesterday, they were at my store and um, they... Uh, they said they needed pellets, so I was on my last few minutes on my break, and I thought, well, I should have enough money for three bags of pellets, so I bought them some bags of pellets. And, you know, yeah, guys, I'm a dog breeder, but I'm not, like, you know, I'm not against the animal shelters. And, you know, if it's done responsibly, in all honesty, I'm not against spaying or neutering either. It just needs to be done responsibly. That's the problem, is that there are pros and cons on both ends, though, guys. You know, I don't think it's always necessarily the right thing to do to get a dog or a cat neutered or spayed, depending on the circumstances. There are new studies out that vets are now saying for excessively large dogs, like Great Dane size and larger, they say that for males, just don't get them neutered at all because that can actually increase their chances of getting cancer. But like, still, I mean, people wanna do what's best for their animals, you know, and I mean, some of mine are spayed and neutered. Robert here, he's neutered. Julie is spayed, but the other dogs are not because I just, I simply just do not want that for them. I want them to live their lives as freely as any other animal in the wild would get to. Yeah, there are, you know, there are a lot of dogs and cats, but think of it like this. Do you really think that we can compare the quote-unquote overpopulation of dogs and cats compared to the outrageous, just simply outrageous number of humans on this planet? Guys, people... Needs, I mean, people do adopt children, and yes, people do adopt animals, but we have to realize this. 
all animals need all domestic animals need homes okay so yes as somebody who is a devout breeder of dogs I fully support you know responsible animal shelters not all of them are responsible but the one I just signed up for today where I want to volunteer they're a very responsible animal shelter and I I really have become great friends with the people who worked there and I bought them bags of pellets yesterday because they needed them they use them for cat litter and so I told them I would get them bags of pellets later and it was funny because I was on my last not my last I was on my um first break it was the end of my first break and a couple of other customers needed some pellets and I told Shelbert at the service desk her name is Shelby but she lets me call her Shelbert I told her to make that three more so I bought three other bags and gave it to the gave them to the IMHS people the IMHS it stands for Intermountain Humane Society so you know I mean I think that there are pros and cons to the whole spay and neuter thing. There are, there are pros and cons to it, you know, and they understand, like they understand that, yeah, I'm a breeder, but they understand that I'm not doing it just to, you know, create more and more puppies. I'm doing it for a purpose. Like if you're doing it for a purpose, guys, that's not, that's not really that big of a concern. Okay, like I'm not worried about that because like if you just want a companion dog yeah I would advise you know go pick up a dog from the shelter it doesn't matter if it's purebred or mixed or not but at the same time if you want a dog that is supposed to be bred for a certain task um, then I would advise going to a breeder for that in that case I would advise going to a breeder getting the right breed of dog that you want for that specific task. In reality, you can train any dog to do that, but some dogs are more bred for it and they're more able to do that task a lot more easily than other dogs are. But still, like, get dogs from, get them from just about wherever you can, you know, as long as the places are responsible. Because yeah, there are a lot of irresponsible breeders out there, but at the same time, there are a lot of animal shelters that are also very irresponsible. They're so irresponsible, it's, it's crazy. And th when I said they're so irresponsible, I was talking on both ends of the argument. You know, I feel personally that it's cruel to take away the most natural part of life from any living being, but at the same time I can understand why people would do it because it can really be hard, you know, to stop overpopulation issues, which has already happened with humans. And I mean, we outnumber, humans outnumber dogs and cats combined by more than seven times. Guys, that's, I'm tired of hearing people say, all this stuff like, oh, well, you know, there's so many dogs and cats in the world, whether there are, but, you know, there are way too many people. Most of the world, most of the humans in this world live in Asia, okay? It is the most inhabited piece of land with over four and a half billion people. That's a lot of people, guys. That is a lot of people. You know, Europe doesn't even have a billion people. America as a whole, from north to south, top of Greenland down to the bottom of Chile has a little over a billion. Africa has about like 1.2 billion or something. Um, the country of Australia has like, what is it? I don't know. Um, the country of Australia has only like, what, 26 million, something like that. Um, so that's not that many people in those places. Asia is large, yes, but a lot of Asia has been inhabited by humans. 
And you know, a lot of Asian countries are poor. They shouldn't be. And I think that we should be helping them out. Like the world should be teaming in to help out the poor countries in this world, which a lot of them are, which a lot of countries are not doing that. It's not just us. I mean, yes, of course we, the country below Canada, yeah, we have tons of problems, but we're, we're not the only countries causing, we're not the only country causing these problems in the world, you know? So, there is an abundance of overpopulation, but it's of people. It's not of dogs or cats, okay? It's not. It's not of dogs or cats. It's of people. There are way too many people, and more and more people should be adopting rather than conceiving their own child, but when you have a lot of highly religious people, you know, they, d they don't believe in abortion at all. They don't care if somebody, you know, gets like raped or whatever. They don't care about that. They just say, well, you need to have the baby either way. That's, that's just wrong, you know? There are positives and negatives to reproduction, guys, and there are positives and negatives to anti-reproduction as well. You know? There's this wild animal sanctuary, you know, near in my state. Um, it's called the Wild Animal Sanctuary, and it's, um, they spay and neuter, stop it, Robert, they spay and neuter all the animals there except for the lions and the reason why is because they found out that when you neuter a male lion his mane either um, turns a lighter color or it just falls off completely so they put contraceptives into the females to prevent births but what they will do is they will let any animal that is pregnant there have uh, have their baby, their young. So, you know, it's, it's really interesting, like, there really are positives and negatives to both sides. There are pros and cons. You know, and I like to say this, if you're so one-sided that you only go to shelters, or if you're so one-sided that you only get from breeders, you're killing animals either way, if you're just that one-sided. I honestly, like, I, I get from both, okay? I don't want to have animals killed on either end. You know, they shouldn't, they shouldn't be doing that, you know? My sister, my sister is one of those people who's so one-sided, it's like she just doesn't care about the dogs from breeders. It's like she doesn't care. It's horrible and I hate it. You know, when people say, oh, well, you should spay and neuter your dogs. If they're not your dogs, don't make the decision, okay? You know? People can file a lawsuit against you for doing stuff like that. If it's not your, if the animal is not yours, don't worry about its health, okay? Just don't worry about it. I mean, like, if it's sick or something, that's one thing, but, like... When it comes to spaying or neutering, you know, don't worry about it if it's not your concern. Just leave it alone, okay? And stop going around, you know, telling other people, you need to get your dog or your cat spayed or neutered because this and this is going to happen. Well, first off, they don't know what your life is like, so, you know, they, they don't know if that's going to happen or not. They have no idea if that's going to happen or not. They say that they know what's going to happen. Well, no, they don't. You know, in all reality... If you live, like, in a really, really remote area, and by that I mean, like, your nearest neighbor is, like, 20 miles away, you know, and you have a fenced-in yard, but you still have a lot of acreage because you have, like, you know, a ranch or something, you know what I mean? You know, and if your dogs are not spayed or neutered, there are obviously, like, there aren't going to be very many dogs around for, like, you know, 20 plus miles so you know there's really it's not necessarily necessary if you like live out in the middle of nowhere to get your dog spayed or neutered you can just keep them intact and uh, you know I'm sure nothing will happen to them you know 
My vet says my dogs are in good health. All of them are. They're all in pretty good health. Yeah, of course, dogs will get problems as they get older, but that happens to any dog. You know, people say that mutts are perfect. Some dogs go through their lives without getting like any major health problems, but they're, they'll all have problems. They're all gonna get sick. You know, they're all gonna get sick at some point, get a stomach virus, or, you know? They're all gonna get that, all dogs will get that. But, um, you know, people think that mutts are perfect. That could not be further from the truth. Mutts can get problems actually just as easily as any purebred dog can. And it's funny because my oldest dog, Julie, she got hip dysplasia at around six years of age. She's now 13 and she's a mutt. And none of my purebred dogs, in fact, my other mixed breeds, in fact, Riley and Robert, they're my mixed breeds, my other two mixed breeds. Um, but none of the other dogs have any of those problems or anything like that. They don't have any problems like that at all. My St. Bernards, you know, they're, they're 10 years old. They don't have that problem. They don't have hip dysplasia. You know, they, they don't, they don't. And a lot of it has to do with what you feed your dogs as well, you know? But guys, like I'm, you know, people think that they should do what's best for their pet, but at the same time, you know, don't go around trying to say, well, other people need to do this. No, they don't, guys. We can choose, it like, obviously, you know, non-abusive things, like loving things to our pets. And I think that, you know, people, a lot of people want to put in the time and effort to train a new puppy to do the tasks that they want them to do instead of getting a dog that's already trained. Because if you ask me, that's the whole fun of it, is training a dog from the beginning. I'm not saying like I would never get a dog that was already trained. I mean, sure I would at some point, but you know, I think it's fun to train them from the very beginning and to keep training them their whole lives. But anyways, guys, that's gonna mark it for this video. So um, you guys have a good day. And I will see you in the next video, and I hope it's a peaceful day and week and month and year for you. Bye.